get started here and just live on the Facebook. And we're going to come down here and we're going to go live on LinkedIn, on LinkedIn Live. So I believe we are live everywhere. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Chris Mattia. My call sign is Whiskey Six Alpha Hotel. Today, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, David W0DHG and Dan NR6V. Uh, KK6DA is going to take, uh, take the week off. And uh, today, we are going to be talking about getting started with gateways. It's just getting started. We're not going to go heavily deep into this. I know there's some kind of a big event going on today, and we want to make sure that we wrap up in time so that everybody able, is able to enjoy that. So for the check-ins today, let me go ahead and um, unpin my my colleagues here for a second. So it's a little bit easier to see my screen here. Give me one second to push all of those buttons and let's see, let's advance the slide. There we go. So to send in your WinLink check-in, if you've got uh, WinLink up and running, go ahead and use the standard WinLink check-in form and send it to all four of us, KK68W0DHG, NR6V and myself, W6AH, uh, we'll add those into the chat for you. And today's uh, question is, have you ever considered setting up your own gateway? And with that, let me step through the process uh, that you need to follow in order to uh, send in your check-in. So I'll go ahead and switch over to my PC and, and move myself down into the corner. So if you've got your WinLink set up, all you need to do is uh, create a new message. In the two field, you're gonna enter in all four of our call signs, um, KK6DA, W0DHG, NR6V, and W6AH. Separate those out with semicolons. Then go up here to select template, click on that, come down to standard templates version and uh, click that guy open. You're gonna come down to the uh, either the general form section, that'll work. Click the general forms and down under there, you'll see, you'll see WinLink check-in. So go ahead and just double click that, open it up and it should, if the, if the demo gods are with you, it should open up inside of your browser. Go ahead and fill out all of the, the top information, call signs, that's, that's you, here's your sender, that's you. You put in your location, your latitude and longitude. And then this is the place to enter in the answer to today's question, which is, of course, uh, have you ever considered setting up your own gateway? And you may be asking when you're when you're finished with that, just hit submit, um, and then you'll need to send in the email. So let me go and admit these new people who are joining us. There we go. We've got a few more joining us uh, coming in. And with that, let me switch back over to my slides and I'll move my microphone out of the way because that's always a little awkward to have my microphone in the way. Um, as always, if you are um, putting anything out on social media, go ahead and use the hashtag wave talkers. So we're sure to see it. And we watch for that on the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, kind of all the, all the social media channels. So throughout the time, if you've been watching along with us, um, we started this off back at episode one, where we were talking about getting started with WinLink and what you had to do uh, in order to get yourself up and running with, uh, with sending your WinLink traffic, sending email via your radio uh, in order to provide emergency communication support. So throughout that time, we've brought this diagram up many, many times. So there's the WinLink application up in the top uh, center uh, that's connected over to your radio. Your radio then transmits the signals over to what's called an RMS gateway. That RMS gateway is either connected to the internet and or it's connected via other uh, via RF to other RMS gateways, and it's able to pass traffic. And there's a lot of a lot more details along the way, but this is the general working uh, structure that we've been following along for for quite some time. And today, what we're going to do is we're going to focus in on that RMS gateway. But before we do, I want to also review one other slide that we've looked at, and that would be 
this slide. So this is how you connect your radio into your computer. You need some kind of mechanism in order to get the signal from your radio into the computer. That's oftentimes done with a signal link. Um, there are a couple of other brands of, of other interface devices. It's basically a fancy USB sound card. It's an external one, but it also will trigger that push to talk. So you don't have to just use the, the Vox feature on your radio. So it's, you got your radio connected to the signal link that is connected uh, into your computer, uh, into your USB port. That USB port goes into your sound control panel inside of Windows, and you have to set up the right USB audio codec in order to make that whole thing work. That's then connected over to um, some sort of interface, either something like uh, UZ7HO sound modem for a virtual TNC. Uh, could also be connected to uh, VARA FM uh, or a VARA HF connection for that matter uh, to, to get that protocol. You could also be using Pactor modems, which is basically pretty similar to this, but a little bit different. And then that T virtual TNC is then connected into your WinLink software. So this is the general signal flow that we've been talking about all along in order to get your radio to talk to WinLink to then send your traffic out to the gateway. And what we're really gonna focus on today is just that RMS gateway. I guess I gotta point in that direction um, and, and step through the process of what it takes to actually set one of these up. So I'm actually considering setting up my own gateway. I've never done this before, um, but we have two people with us who, who have done that. Um, both uh, Dan and R6V and David W0DHG are both gateway operators. And so to get us a little bit further along, I want to turn this over to, to Dave to, to talk a little bit about what the gateway is, go into a little more detail there. And then we're going to hear the journey that each of them have taken to setting up their own gateway and what it actually takes to, to get one up and running. So let me turn this over to, to Dave. Um, I'm just gonna bring you up to stage and um, take it away, man. All right, thanks a lot. So as Chris stepped through the last couple of slides that showed uh, what we talked about when we first started getting uh, your WinLink connected to be able to send RF, um, it's very similar in terms of what you'd want to do to set your gateway up, right? So we're going to start with, um, you need to have a computer and you need to have the software and the, the signal link or the interface and the radio itself. And essentially the gateway is the ability for you as a gateway station owner to allow all of the remote WinLink clients that are in your area to connect to you um, to give them a, a portal or an access to take the messages RF and get it out on the internet and get it up to the CMS. So stations elsewhere, um, whether it's in your local area or far across the country, uh, can receive those messages, right? So again, the hardware that we've been talking about all along and, and we're in, this is session 11, Chris? Yeah, yep. okay that we've been talking about since session one. Um, again, we start with, you've got your radio, you've got some kind of interface uh, to connect the radio to your computer. And, and mostly we're talking about a signal link, but there are some other options as well. Um, the software on your computer, the it's all of the same equipment. Yes, you also will need an antenna. Um, as you get into um, running a gateway, there's some other considerations like uh, backup power and wanting to be up 24 seven and as Dan and I get into talking about what our gateways look like, we'll get into a little bit more detail around that. But essentially, every one of you that has a RF capable station set up today has the equipment and the ability to be a gateway operator. Now, I wouldn't suggest using that on the client software that you, uh, the client PC or equipment that you use every day, um, but all of the stuff that you've already done once is all of the stuff that you would need to do if you wanted to implement a gateway. It's not hard. There's not a lot of magic and behind the scenes stuff. It is all the same equipment. It's all for, for my gateway. 
it's a two meter um, radio. I'm, I'm running it on a dual band, but it's a two meter radio or a 220 or a 70 centimeter or even an RF, uh, HF radio if you wanted to go that way. An interface from the radio to the computer, a computer that's dedicated to running your gateway. And then the gateway software is where it diverges a little bit. I still use on my gateway the sound modem software for packet, the VARA software for the VARA, but it's not a different sound modem and it's not a different VARA. It's the same software that we're already using. There's an interface that kind of stands in between. We're not using the WinLink Express software. We're using other software that runs the gateway. But I'll tell you honestly, and don't tell the WinLink development team because I know they're all watching. It's actually a little bit easier to set the gateway up than it is to get the client going. Um, and that's all there really is to it. Um, so I think that covers the big picture. Uh, I'd really like to throw it over for Dan because Dan started before I did and let Dan tell you about what his, uh, why did he decide he wanted to be a gateway operator and what his journey was. And then we'll throw it back to me and I'll kind of go through my process as well. All right, let me get my screen up here. Uh, is people seeing Winlink gateways? Nope, just your beautiful face, Dan. Oh, there, there it is. Go. Now we see in Winlink gateways? Now we are seeing Winlink gateways. Roger that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, time to quit while I'm winning. Okay, so I, I wanted to talk a little bit about sort of my journey and how I set this up. Um, you know, the why was really simple. I live in the San Fernando Valley. We've talked about this before. We're a valley. We're surrounded by mountains. There's 3 million people in the valley, and we had no gateways. Um, so we were really limited in getting information out. Uh, the isolation uh, was from the rest of the region and from our served agencies. So uh, I got interested in Winlink, but it was really stopped in my tracks because I didn't have a gateway I could hit. So you don't have one to do or to hit, you make your own. So what does it take? Uh, there's some must-haves. Uh, obviously, you have to have a radio, an antenna, a Windows PC, and some kind of sound card interface, and obviously the cables and software and all that stuff. Um, the software, as David said, is different than the uh, um, RMS Express, but it is free software, and you can download it uh, from the same place you downloaded uh, your RMS Express. And then you've got to have a power supply and cables. And let's go into a little more uh, detail. First of all, we'll talk about good to haves also. Uh, you want to have some kind of backup power. Uh, when you, when you uh, get authorized to have a gateway, uh, they really want it to be running 24-7. It's not as though they're going to come to you and say, hey, you were down for two hours last week. But that's the goal is to be up 24 seven. So people know what they can rely on. So you need backup power and you really kind of want to have some remote control software so that when David texts you and says, hey, is your gateway down and you're not sitting in front of your gateway, uh, you can remote in and, and check it and reset it if you need to. So uh, what are the considerations? Well, for the radio, uh, first choice is going to be band, and that that may be based on kind of convention in your area. Some areas are very VHF strong. Some areas are more UHF strong. Uh, 220 is a great band that sort of has the characteristics of both VHF and UHF um, and is underused. So uh, that's a band that we're really trying to uh, get people to uh, consider using. So one of the, those, or maybe all of those, depending on what you want to do. Uh, duty cycle of the radio. Um, if you have a busy gateway, that radio is going to be working pretty hard. So you want to consider, uh, is, is your radio uh, uh, a light duty radio, or is it more of a heavy duty radio? Uh, connections obviously are important. Um, do you have data connection or are you going in through the mic jack? And then also important is power consumption. And that does vary. Uh, that also plays into whether or not you want to run high power all the time. If you don't need to, you can extend that 
uh, battery rate, your backup battery range by dropping the power down. So uh, another consideration. As far as your antenna, uh, that's gonna be very kind of personalized to your location. Uh, you know, height, are there restrictions? Uh, uh, that kind of thing. Obviously more gain is better, but that plays into the height. Uh, durability, if you're in a really windy area, maybe a taller antenna isn't the best thing to use. Um, I have one uh, antenna set up that I have to bring down every time the wind comes up. That would not be a good place to put my, uh, my uh, gateway antenna. Uh, as far as the PC is concerned, you don't need much. I think David said he's using a 10-year-old laptop to, to run his gateway. Uh, you don't need a lot of computing power, but you want to think about how you're going to do battery backup. Laptops tend to run on 19 volts, so that means you're going to have to have some power conversion in order to run that. Uh, either uh, you know an inverter at 120 volts with your wall wart, or um, 12 volts with a step up converter but each of those additional pieces of equipment are gonna drop your battery life down some. So uh, old laptops are really good for that, but that is a limitation on them. Uh, what I used, and we'll talk more about that later, but um, is one of these mini PCs. And one of the reasons I chose that was because it runs natively on 12 volts. So I can do backup on that very easily. As far as the sound card's concerned, you know, we're big fans of the signal link uh, for a, a bunch of reasons, but um, um, the fact that it uh, has cables available for virtually every radio is a real big thing. Um, I did purchase what's called a RIM card. Those are great if you have certain radios because they plug right into the radio and you don't have to deal with cabling or any of that. DigiRig is something relatively new. Um, I'm running my uh, Vara HF setup on a DigiRig and it works beautifully. And it's about half the price or a little less than half the price of a uh, signal link. DRA board's another option uh, similar to the RIM card that is uh, more specific to certain radios that have data ports. And then the software, the SysOp software, your primary software is going to be what's called RMS Packet. That's the basic gateway software that does all the magic. Uh, there are two other pieces of software. One's called RMS Relay. Um, for a VHF UHF setup, you don't have to have it, but it does offer um, the ability for you to decide what happens when the internet goes down. And some of the options available are you can reject messages if your internet's down. Another one is you can store uh, and forward your messages when the internet comes back up. Um, one of the things that can happen if the internet's down, uh, people that are within connection distance of your uh, gateway can uh, connect to your gateway and download messages that are meant for them, uh, even if the internet's down. So uh, that, that's a, a good way to deal with that. So that's what RMS Relay does. And then there's RMS Tri Mode. This is the software that does the magic when you're doing a hybrid gateway. In other words, you have VHF, UHF, and HF. Um, it, it's what allows the... Uh, uh, the cat control software to cycle through the different HF bands and uh, listen for signals in a rotating sort of order. Power supply. Um, you want an adequate power supply, but you don't want to overdo it because uh, if you overdo it, it's going to draw more power. And again, you've got to be thinking in terms of your backup power. And as far as backup power, you got to figure out how much time you, you need to run. Uh, what is typical? Uh, I live in an area where power outages are pretty rare, uh, but when they happen, they can last for a long time. 
uh, folks that live in areas that get a lot of severe weather, outages are more frequent and may go on for days. So you need to consider the, the nature of where you're at. Um, I'm currently using an uninterruptible power supply. I have a fairly heavy duty one. Uh, we had a power outage uh, six months ago or so. Uh, I was out for 26 hours and my gateway was up for about 16 and went down after that because the uh, UPS battery died. Um, but you can also use just a, a good heavy duty uh, AGM or lithium iron phosphate uh, battery, uh, run the, your equipment off the battery and just keep the battery charged through whatever means you have. Uh, remote control software. Uh, we like real VNC. Um, it's free for non-commercial use. It's very capable, uh, really all, all you would need for uh, the gateway, but there are others, Team Viewer, and others that are very similar that would do the job just as well. Other considerations you got to think about what frequency you're going to use, and that's going to be based a lot on your local band plan. Um, and are you going to run it on a voice or a digital frequency? The way I understand it is that digital frequencies you're not supposed to do voice on. Uh, whereas voice frequencies, you can do digital and voice. But I think for uh, a gateway, you probably want to pick one of the digital frequencies in your band plan. But that also is going to depend on your convention in your area. In Southern California, we now have a lot of gateways. And we did an experiment. I don't know, I'm not sure how long ago we did this, nine months ago, maybe. We all agreed that we were going to put our gateways on the same frequency. And we weren't at all sure it was going to work. We didn't know whether they were going to interfere with each other. Um, but we decided it would be very useful, uh, particularly for digipeating, uh, so, uh, which is very useful in, in our area because of all the hills and canyons. Uh, the ability to digipete was, was really something we looked forward to. So we put all of our gateways, almost all of them in the county, are on the same frequency. And it's worked out very well for us. We've had very, very few problems with any kind of interference or, um, um, you know, lost messages, that kind of thing. And then local agreements. It's always good. We have periodic meetings of uh, all of the SoCal gateway operators, and we talk about stuff and uh, we make agreements on what we're going to do. Uh, for example, when Vara FM had a major update that was going to not be backwards compatible, we had got together and agreed we're going to all switch our gateways on this date. And then we publicized that. So all the client software, uh, all the folks out there could update theirs and have it done in time. So here's my setup. Uh, I chose uh, a radio called the ASU FT2900. The current version of that's the 2980. It's a single band VHF radio. Why did I pick it? Well, the first reason is I already owned it. And my recommendation is for a gateway, if you're thinking of starting one up, start with what you have. Uh, antennas, radios, connections, signal links, go with what you have. I like this radio for a couple of reasons. It's a high power radio. I think it's rated at 70 watts. So I can run it at one of the mid power levels and still have quite a bit of power output. Uh, it has a big heat sink. So a duty cycle should be really good. And because it has the big heat sink, it doesn't have to run a fan. So that uh, keeps the power uh, usage down a bit. Uh, the bad part about it, it doesn't have a data port, so I'm limited to 1,200 baud. And these radios are known, if you run them on a high-duty cycle at high power, they're known to overheat. So I really recommend if you're going to pick the 2800, which was the predecessor, the 2900, 2980, uh, keep it to, uh, they have mid-1, mid-2 to one of those. And um, I found in most cases... I can connect to anybody that I can get on high power. I can get them on mid power as well. So uh, it, seems to, it seems to work well at that rating. 
uh, Antenna. I have an, uh, a VHF vertical made by Antenex. Uh, why did I pick that antenna? I traded for it. Uh, I had a, a tram a VHF antenna and it's a little broader, a wider band antenna. And somebody I knew had uh, a more limited band antenna, but it happened to be tuned right for where my gateway is. So I traded for it. Um, it's a mono band antenna. So it's not trying to do all things for all people. Uh, it's a pretty high gain antenna and it has relatively low wind resistance because I do live in an area that gets some pretty good wind sometimes. Uh, for the computer, uh, I have what's called a B-Link BT4. I think this model is no longer made, but uh, there is a similar model out there on Amazon. Uh, I chose it for a, cu a couple of reasons. Uh, it's compact. It has more than enough computing power. And the big thing for me was it runs natively on 12 volts. So it makes my backup solution very simple. Uh, sound card, signal link, I owned it. So I went with that. Uh, they work well. They're flexible because the uh, pre-made cables are out there for virtually any radio. Uh, they're easy to configure whether you use the jumper wires or one of the pre-made uh, uh, chips that uh, configure it. Uh, it's just a really easy way to go. But that doesn't mean that I haven't tried other things. Like I say, I have a digi rig that I'm using on my client HF station. I bought a DRA board to try uh, on another radio. Uh, and so whatever you've got is really the probably the best thing for you. Here's a picture of my setup. I apologize for the pictures, but it just so happened when I took these, the sun was coming in through the window pretty high. But those are the two monitors. On the left is my client station. And on the right is my gateway station. I run them both on the same computer. Uh, you just have to uh, make sure that your, uh, your um, sound modem and VARA FM versions for your client station are in different folders and use different uh, port settings than uh, your gateway station. What challenges did I have? And the answer really is not a lot. Uh, the setup, I had some hand-holding from a couple of people locally. And as uh, David said, uh, getting the software set up is really easy. It's probably easier than setting up uh, the, the RMS Express software. And with a little bit of hand-holding, I had it up and running very quickly. I did have some issues. I'm trying to set up a second gateway right now uh, on 220. And um, I've had a terrible time with conflicting information on the internet on the pinouts for the radio I'm trying to use. I think I finally have it figured out. But um, uh, if you're making your own cables, that can be a little confusing. And you may end up just having to... Uh, test the cables and, and uh, measuring them to find out what's what. Uh, the other thing is I'm setting up a 220 gateway. There's nobody around me right now with client stations on 220. So I think I have it set up correctly, but I haven't been able to test it because there's nobody else out there that's set up. David's working on that. So hopefully I'll be able to test that this week. And that's it. Uh, that's my experience. Uh, we'll send it back. We're we going to you, David. I think we're going to me. All right. You're up. Is that all right, Chris? That works for me. Um, we did get a question in the chat. Uh, Brent asked, what's the current draw at 12 volt DC for the total setup? Do you know? I have not measured it. Um, you know, the, the, the radio is on, on um, receive mode, standby mode is pretty low draw. The PC is very low draw because it's all solid state. There's no hard drive, uh, it's all uh, solid state memory. Um, signal link draws very little. So uh, it's really the radio and that depends a lot on your duty cycle too. If you're, if you're a busy gateway and transmitting a lot, uh, your, your battery life's gonna be much shorter but I have not measured it. 
I just know it works pretty well with the UPS I have. And you were able to get off of your UPS, you were able to, to get, you said 16 hours, I think you said? Yes. Okay. And I, I do have a 125 amp hour um, AGM type battery uh, with an IOTA power supply charging it. I just have not converted over to it yet. I've got a little bit of cabling to do, but eventually I'll get on that and I'll be totally 12 volt. So if, if I'm understanding correctly, then setting up a gateway for you was an iterative process of getting started with the gear you already had and slowly building up because you had a need uh, in the area. And, and you mentioned the area that you're in, in San Fernando Valley, there's roughly 3 million people in that area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. it, 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 and, and immediately upon setting up my gateway um it got busy and then david added his and uh, we have a third one in the valley here now um there's another one that's outside of the valley but he's high enough that uh is he's a very good location and a lot of people in the valley can hit him reliably as well we sort of went from uh, famine to feast that's awesome um, Jason's asking, is the software stable? Any hangups or freezing? Uh, I've had no trouble with that at all. I do occasionally, uh, have to reset, uh, the uh, software. It, that almost always is the result of a windows update. That's, yeah, that's that, going to be your, my, yeah. Yeah. My, right. my comment was going to be that the, uh, the Winlink software is completely stable windows. Not so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you 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 kind of pay. What is it? Tuesday that the uh, Windows updates come out. You sort yeah. of pay a little more attention to it around that time. But um, yeah, even with the client stations, Windows update tends to reset the sound card in your software. So you'll find it's reset to your your built-in speakers and that kind of thing. And the same thing's true with the gateway. You just you have to watch it and. Fortunately, being a busy gateway, um, I hear about it pretty quickly when I'm not running. People text me or send me an email and say, you know, ask if you're up and I'll say, I think I am, but I'll go test it. And hey, by the way, Dan, I just so, go ahead. By the way, Dan, your gateway is not up. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, I saw Mike said in the chat that um, when the conditions are good, he can hit yours from Tijuana. And that's got to be what two hundred miles, two to three hundred miles. I think. Yeah. yeah, I can I can hit his as well. Yeah, I not not mine though. I can't hit Mike's. <laughs> All right, uh, David, let's hear your story of uh, your your journey into setting up your gateway. Sure, absolutely. Hap happy to share that with you. I'm gonna actually share my screen because I have a face for radio. Uh, let's see. I think it's this desktop. We've got other questions coming in also. So uh, we'll try and we'll, I'm going to tag some of these questions and we'll try and come back to some of them. So, um, so if, if you can see my screen, yeah, chat. Yep. Yeah, we can see your chat. So if you can see my screen, you can see my gateway. That's my gateway. And that's the view of my gateway I get from anywhere in the world. And, um, and, and I'll tell you all, um, probably about eight months before COVID struck, um, Oliver Dully, uh, K6OLI came to our uh, local Aries meeting when we used to meet in person. Remember those days? It seems like so long ago. And he came and he talked to us about Winlink, what Winlink was, what it could do, how it would work. And um, I have been doing, doing digital stuff on and off almost since I became a ham a little bit over 10 years ago. Uh, did a lot of FL Digi and wind beams, uh, end beams. And I thought, wow, this looks kind of cool. I should get into it. But by the time Oliver was done talking for about 90 minutes about uh, what it was and how to get it set up, and we kind of did a little workshop, my head was exploding. And actually, part of the reason why we're doing these classes now is that I thought it um, it deserved a lot more time. I wasn't I wasn't actually expected to be doing 20 hours a course as we're kind of at now, but um, I knew it needed more than 90 minutes. Um, fast forward a little bit, we got to COVID, 
Um, I had kind of played around a little bit. I was up on Telnet. I was able to send um, RF. And um, we started, you know, getting more involved with, with their Aries group. They were using a lot of um, Winlink. And um, I actually kind of started reaching out to Dan and David before Chris joined us to say, well, let's try to do some Winlink training classes. I got up to speed. It was working good. I had no ideas and no intention to ever get involved as a sys operator. Didn't even consider what it was. What I wanted to do was get other people trained. Well, shortly after we started doing our, I think it was our first class series, um, Dan got his gateway set up and, um, and he kind of made it sound like it was pretty easy. And I was feeling a little left out. And um, when, when we talked about it with Dan and he said, oh, well, you know, I had this and I had the radio and I had the PC and then the antenna and it, you know, it wasn't really that hard. I thought to myself, well, well, gosh, I got a lot of crap in my garage and I probably could use some of that crap to get, to get a gateway set up. Um, we are very public minded and service oriented in our house and, uh, in the community. And I thought well, that'd be a, a good way to help out. So, um, I started, you know, I, I called Dan, we talked a little bit. I saw some of the stuff that Oliver did and, um, what ended up coming out of that was the W zero DHG 10 gateway that you can see there, um, in, in what we call the man cave or the garage. Um, and as Chris mentioned earlier before, that's running on a, a 10 year old HP, uh, power book laptop. It's a core I five. It does have like, I think it has 16 gig of Ram and a SSD hard drive to help kind of help move it along. Um, the, uh, Yesu FT, I think that's actually a, an original 2900, um, uh, running there is, um, something I bought years and years ago on eBay. Um, for a well discounted price that was 100% working, except it wasn't, um, when I got it home and I reset it a couple times, I found that, um, the offsets didn't work very well and the PL tones were kind of questionable. And so it got moved over to the corner of my garage and, um, oh, hold on a sec, Chris, sorry. I saw your note. Um, Now yeah. I'm on the present. Now I'm on presenter's view. <laughs> swap, just swap the views. Swap displays. How about that? Okay. There you go. Now um, we Thanks. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and so it ended up in a corner of my garage, just sitting there waiting for something to do. Um, and after I heard, you know, Dan talk about it and the experience I had sending Winlink messages as a client station, I realized, well, gosh, I've got a perfectly good two meter FM radio that will do simplex really, really well and almost nothing else. It sounded like the perfect opportunity for me to start down my path. Um, the power supply that's sitting to the left of it there um, is you know, one of those ones you can get on Amazon or elsewhere for 40 or 50 bucks. Actually, um, I had swapped that with a, a friend that needed some help and uh, I bartered installing a uh, radio in his truck and he had a couple of these that he wasn't using. And that was my payment for that. Uh, you can see that I did have to upgrade the fan cause the fan got a little bit noisy over time. And I actually went inside the case of that power supply. Cause that one's like a little two by two inch fan and the, the bearings went bad. So I unplugged that and plugged in that external, uh, variable power supply uh, or variable speed fan that's on the top of that signal link to the to the left of that and that one's hooked in through the microphone port as dan said earlier um it's only really capable of doing 1200 but we've kind of found down here in southern california 1200 is well it might not be the fastest it is very reliable and it works really 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 well um and I went down the journey. It did take me a couple days to get it set up. I did have an antenna on the roof um, and um, I went for it. So originally when I set it up, well, here's, here's the radio. Um, uh, I, I, again, I didn't have that extra fan on there. The fan um, started to go downhill after a while. And again, the, the fan that I replaced it with that variable speed fan uh, was something out of the junk box that I had accumulated over time that I plugged in. Uh, here's the gateway operating. Um, and a uh, oh, public service announcement. 
VAR FM has been updated from 4.1.8 to 4.2.1. Now, gateway owners, I'm not saying to upgrade it yet until we test it out a little bit, but I did update my client um, as we spoke earlier on the on the uh, class session today. Um, I did add a UPS. Um, that's not the biggest UPS, but the battery on the laptop is usually good for about six hours. Um, I'm in a, in a place here where we don't have a lot of power outages. And I hope that um, if, we, if we do have one, the gateway will run for five or six hours. We, had, um, we did actually have a little bit of an event shortly after COVID and um, I was able to keep the, uh, the gateway up and my kids on their uh, Wi-Fi with the, um, the Spectrum internet uh, cable modem for about four and a half hours. So we'll have a little bit of service there. I have some bigger batteries on backup that I can unplug the power supply. And we do have Anderson power poles and all that. And uh, I can bring to bear about 400 out amp hours of uh, service to that if I need, as well as uh, power for the laptop. Uh, again, I wanted to show you this. This is really the software that you need to make this happen. Um, on the right, it's software that you all has, um, should be familiar with already. Um, having set up client stations, the um, at the top is the sound mo modem by UZ7HO, uh, running the packet side of my gateway, and on the bottom on the right is the VAR FM, and you can see there there's a new ver version available, and I'm not going to update until we're all comfortable here. Now on the left side is the RMS packet software that is really um, the what makes the gateway run. This is the brains behind it all. Um, it, it was an easy setup. And honestly, as I mentioned before, it was an easier setup than my WinLink Express client, at least from my opinion. Um, got it set up. It controls pretty much everything on the PC. Uh, there are considerations as a gateway owner that you want to think about. Um, I went into my Windows setup and set it up so that if the PC reboots for every, any reason at all, it will auto log in and it will auto start up the RMS packet software. And what's a nice feature of it is it'll automatically launch your sound modem and your VARA just like it does on your uh, WinLink Express client. So um, for whatever reason, if my PC restarts or reboots, um, it'll restart, it'll log itself back in, it'll start up the RMS packet and Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything works well. If um, the Windows updates, the you know the Tuesday updates uh, don't mess it up, and you can actually see here in the bottom in the um, in the system tray, there is a Windows update lurking and waiting there for me. You can see the little yellow. Oh, you can see the little yellow dot, about six icons over from the uh, from the right showing that there's a Windows update. And usually when I see those, I check it. Honestly, I check my gateway probably twice a day. I log in remotely. Um, this is in, in the shack, in the garage. I'm not out there all the time. But as Dan mentioned before, um, we've kind of standardized on using the real VNC viewer. Um, as Dan mentioned, for non-commercial use, which would apply to all of us hams, it's free for up to five client stations. So, um, I have a number of stations set up that I can remote control, and this is one of those. I'll take a look. If I see that there's an update, I'll launch it, and I may actually go out there to the garage and watch it. The last part of the, the magic or whatever of the gateway are antennas, and um, this is my modest antenna farm on the side of the house. Yes, I apologize. That tram in the middle is slightly bending to, uh, to the west there, but it's, you know, it's what it is. Um, the, the gateway is actually running off the furthest one to the left. That's a two meter dedicated, um, antenna and, um, does what it needs to do. Uh, I saw Mike made in the, in the comments that he can actually, he's hit my gateway, um, from East Tijuana as well. And I think we should talk offline about how you did that. Cause there's a whole lot of dirt between you and me. And if you can see, um, those cypress trees, uh, in, on the right of the picture, um, those are on a hill that, that rise up about 80 feet be behind my house, which is the small hill behind the Topanga Santa Monica mountains, which would be between me and Mike. So I wonder how he was able to do that, but I'm also super excited that 
that he's able to, to get in there. But really, you know, the whole thing about my gateway experience, my journey was that um, I felt left out. I felt like I could serve the community. Um, in uh, where Dan was, uh, he covers the floor of the San Fernando Valley, just really awesome. Um, I was hoping to expand out a little bit into Simi Valley, Calabasas, and Agura, which is uh, the the part of the city of Los Angeles. I'm kind of all the way to the west. I was hoping to expand out there. I know there's a couple stations that can hit me. They can't hit Dan. Um, but otherwise, I was just hoping to expand out and make it happen. And as um, as I mentioned before, it was almost all uh, crap that I had in my garage. <laughs> Just honestly, it was here. It needed a home. I wasn't doing anything with it. And so I, I wanted to step up. And um, Dan kind of went over this, but, you know, my gateway learnings were, um, first of all, you have to apply to be a, a gateway operator. And I think mostly they want to be able to vet you to make sure that you understand when you're saying, hey, I want to operate a gateway, that this is just not a casual thing. You're not just going to turn it on and turn it off and have it when you want it up or not. Um, they'll reach out to you and they'll really ask you, you know, are, are you ready to have this thing up 24 seven? Do you have reliable internet? Do you have a power backup supply um, idea behind it? And then they'll also reach out to you separately about, about shares. And I don't have the equipment for that, but someday I might put up a, a shares network as well. Um, power and internet are important things. I have UPSs on, um, the equipment that you saw that's out in my shack, as well as UPS is on the, uh, the cable modem and uh, router that comes in from spectrum so that, um, that we can keep it up in, in the event of a power power failure. Um, you want to have the ability to uh, remote control. And we showed that real uh, VNC software. Let me see if I can pop it up here for you. Uh, give me a second. So this real VNC software, you can see that, Chris? Yeah, we can. Thank you. Um, this is some some great stuff. They make this, um, uh, they provide this free, again, uh, up to five clients um, for non-commercial use. And again, um, we hams, uh, we qualify as that non-commercial use. Um, you can see I have a, a couple of, uh, here's my gateway. This is a, another gateway. This is um, the first one I showed you. That's W0DHG10. Uh, the Hamley one, this is a W0DHG11 that's at a, a neighbor's house of mine who's um, approximately 400 feet higher and has a better view of the city than I do because I live in a little bit of a canyon. Um, this is my go kit uh, setup, and it's set up so that I can do both the um, Winlink Express client or uh, a gateway. Uh, occasionally, if um, we have exercises here in Los Angeles area or if we have a disaster, I may be one of the folks that has uh, four-wheel drive access and, and ability to get to some of the higher uh, hills and some of the trails that are locked off. I have gate codes for those. I can go and take that go kit um, with one of those little B-Link puck PCs like Dan showed you and set up a, a gateway or a digipeter somewhere high in the hills so that we can move traffic in and out of the area, um, as well as some of the other uh, client PCs that I use. And... Um, Windows updates. We already talked a little bit about that. I'll tell you honestly, uh, I have had zero problem with the Winlink software. Um, the stuff that the Winlink team puts out is just solid. It just works all the time. Um, we've had a little bit of updates here and there with Vara and Sound Modem. It usually doesn't break anything. We just have to coordinate those. Um, but it's really the Windows updates that cause you problems. And mostly it's that once you do a Windows update and reboots, it decides that um, your signal link might be your main uh, sound card and it may forget about the fact that the signal link's there or what have you. You may just have to go back in there and make sure it's pointed to the right thing. So um, that's kind of my journey. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I enjoy having those gateways up again. Um, it's not just set it and forget it. You do have to go out and keep an eye on it. Uh, Dan and I uh, will talk pretty much regularly throughout the week uh, in the mornings while I'm working here at home uh, on this side of my desk. That's the work side, not this side of the desk. That's the fun side. 
I'll hear Dan ping in my gateway or I'll ping Dan's gateway and we'll text back, back and forth for whatever reason, if his isn't up or, or mine's not up for whatever reason. And it's not very often, but it does happen occasionally. So with that, I'll, uh, are there questions in the chat or I'll turn it back to Chris? There, there are questions in the chat. I'm going to just bring everybody back up to stage here real quick. Um, so uh, thank you both. That's, that's really awesome to hear the journey. And I, and I love the fact that essentially both of you set up your gateways with, as David says, crap out of your garage, the stuff that you already have. Uh, in order to set up and run run your gateways and and get online and um, it's being out here in Ventura County there is one gateway that I can reach so I am working on setting up my own my own gateway I'm going to get that online here uh, pretty soon um, but I have one gateway that I can reach and that gateway is within RF range of David and David's in with our F range of Dan. So if you go back to episode four, when we talked about digipeding, that's exactly how I was able to get my signal into the San Fernando Valley uh, by digipeding in through um, uh, W6RH, uh, who's the emergency coordinator uh, in Ventura County. I can get to his gateway and then we can radio in from there. So Stuart, uh, VE3SMF asks, can you describe setting up the ports in your internet Wi-Fi to be able to send and receive to CMS? Was there any kind of special port settings or anything like that that you needed to do for your radio, for your, uh, your Wi-Fi and your, gate, your internet? Yeah, Dan, I, I didn't have to do anything. Nope, I didn't either. And honestly, um, Stuart, if... Um, if your WinLink Express client uh, can send Telnet, then your gateway should be able to do it too. It's again, the, the guys that are on the development team that write this software, they have it down. It works really well. I saw Mike, Mike made a, a comment in the uh, chat and he also posted a screenshot of the 16 gateways. I think it's 16 um, that he hosts and manages um, and, and honestly, it's across Barbados, Dominican Republic, Honduras, Guatemala, Costa Rica. I am I am uh, at three gateways that I'm hosting now. I feel kind of like still like a little gateway operator uh, compared to Mike. And, and I guess they're using um, TeamViewer, which is a great software. I have used that as, as well. Um, and it, as you get into the, uh, the big leagues and you need more than five, you know, th those are good options as well. There were several comments in the chat that came in about Windows updates and several folks uh, made the suggestion for, for your Windows updates, make sure you set those to manually update them as opposed to automatic. That way you're not caught off guard by Windows doing something. Do both of you have your set now to automatic or are they set to manual or what are you doing there? Uh, mine set up so that it install or it downloads the update, but I have to reboot for it to install. But that doesn't always work. Sometimes Windows forces them out that uh, um, that you know that automatically does it, and that's where you yeah, get. Yeah, some trouble. of the some of the critical updates will override that. Um, you know, when when they went to Windows ten and. Um, the whole uh, upgrade process was changed license-wise. Um, there were some of the versions of the software that they pushed down to folks that didn't give you the opt, the option to say, I didn't want to do updates or um, I wanted to have less control about it. And so I, I'm in the same boat as Dan. Mine's set to download and let me know. That's why you saw that little icon when I shared my screen. But I will tell you that some of the critical patches that they put out there um, overrides that option and it'll it'll go ahead and put them on there uh, after hours when we're all sleeping when's the worst possible time for a winlink gateway operator to get an update um, but they'll push it down and, and it'll do the restart one of the troubles too with windows is that you know windows 10 is not windows 10 uh, there are many 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 versions of it and they all behave a little bit differently if you've ever tried to talk somebody over the phone about how to solve a problem or find something and they tell you, my screen doesn't look like that. It's like, they're right because there's so many 
different variations of it, but uh, um, most of the time uh, having it set up so, so that you manually reboot it, it works. Um, and it's not a real big deal to check it. You know, like, like my, uh, like David said, uh, pretty much every morning I get on and, uh, uh, check his gateway and a couple of others that I can hit. And if I can't get through, I try it a little bit later. And if I still can't get through, I'll let them know and vice versa. Yeah. And, and 95% of the time, 95% of the time when there's an issue, it really has to do with the fact that it restarted it, it, uh, one of the um, the TNCs lost the fact that the sound modem was the sound card assigned to it and it went back, reverted back to the built-in sound card. So it's really just opening up the settings panel and picking the fact that uh, the sound card is what you want to use and then going into Windows and the control panel and telling um, telling Windows itself that the sound card you want to use is not your signal link is the built-in sound card so that you're not pushing beeps and bops and other stuff that comes through uh, windows out over your radio. It takes two minutes when it happens. Every once in a while, I might have to reboot one or two more times in case there was a weird update, but it's really, it's minimal, uh, minimal. Uh, yeah, and in meetings. the RMS packet software, there's a, a button that says reset TNC and that solves an awful lot of problems. Uh, it just re it reinitiates the uh, uh, sound modem and VARA and the interface. And that solves a lot of problems. That's usually my first go-to. And then if that doesn't work, I reboot. And if that doesn't work, I start to try to dig down and never had anything that went beyond uh, that and resetting the uh, the uh, uh, audio codec uh, settings. Um, I know you, uh, David. I think you mentioned uh, one of the setups that you're you're working towards is a portable gateway. Uh, let's say you got deployed, you needed to move up to a to another location. Um, if somebody was going to set up just a portable temporary gateway, would they still need to have all of the, you know, hop, hop through any of the extra hoops of, of setting up a gateway if it's not going to be a permanent one? Can you just download the software and, and give it a try and get it started? How does that work? So um, what I realized was, and I, and I showed a couple episodes ago, I have that little, that little portfolio that has uh, a radio and a signal link in there and the cables to, uh, to run. In fact, it's sitting right here. One sec. So I, I showed this, this setup, Oops, cables are falling out. Um, this is my portable wind link. What I called it was a station when we went through in the earlier episodes. And um, I demoed that in, in one of the earlier episodes and some of the earlier classes we did. And I realized as we were getting into talking about um, gateways and um, as we started to talk about in our own organization about needing to set up digipeters and in the event of disasters, if some of the stations weren't up or down, I realized, well, I've got everything in that little case. And literally this is like the size of a sheet of notebook paper, a little bit thicker, obviously. Um, but everything's in here minus the battery and the laptop and the antenna. Actually, the uh, antenna actually fits in here because I use like a roll-up J-pole. Um, I have everything that I need to not only be a OneLink Express client, but um, on the PC I use for that, all I needed to do is install the the gateway software and then just decide, hey, I'm going to be a client. I'm going to launch the client software or, hey, what we really need is a gateway to be able to relay traffic. And I launched the gateway software and set it up. And it's all the same. Now, um, you need to be approved as a gateway operator to show up on the gateway operators list and to log on. So not everybody can just do this. Um, if, if you're a client working out, if, if you're out in the field, and there's a, an outage and you want to play the role um, to help uh, relay traffic, if you can hit another gateway 
um, and someone's on the other side and they can't hit that gateway, you can act as a digipeter. And we've talked about that in earlier episodes and you can have folks digipeat through you. Um, but I think you'd have to go through the process of getting approved as a gateway operator. Um, I don't know the technical details of getting approved as a gateway operator for temporary emergency setups are concerned. That might be a question we can follow up with um, with Mike and, and Steve and the rest of the team. Um, but I have this set up. Um, and originally this was set up as W0DHT12. Actually, that's uh, it's um, W0DHT12 is now permanently set up at uh, one of our local sheriff stations um, as a gateway and it's been operating for a couple of weeks now. Um, so if I were to take this out in the field, I'd you know just run it up to 13. Um, if we needed to have that up and supporting, and honestly, I think if my house was down and and not operating for whatever reason, if we had the big earthquake, I'd probably take that out in the field, set it up as my main primary W0DHD10 because nobody that's hitting my gateway is going to know that it's not at my home. Um, but if I can get up somewhere, get it tethered to my cell phone, which has internet, you know, um, first net service. Um, and then I can get it on the internet. I can act as a gateway pretty much anywhere I can get um, cellular coverage. Very cool. Um, before we wrap up, I see Mike has has uh, just shared uh, his his new portable Winlink gateway kit. So um, let me uh, let me find Mike real quick in the list. I'm going to make him uh, a co so we can unmute his mic, and then I'll go ahead and share this, and he can talk briefly about about what he's got in these uh, pictures here. So, all right, Mike, you should be able to unmute and let me go ahead and share this screen real quick. Make sure I sound good. Oh, you sound great today. God bless America. <laughs> there you go, Mike. And uh, I think we should be able to see, uh, see this, uh, your new portable, Winlink portable kit. Yeah, it's a full service gateway kit been used on some Baja races, <clears throat> excuse me, and a couple of Mexican wildfires down here. <clears throat> it's the second version. I actually have two kits. One belongs to the radio club, and this one is mine. Um, all you have to have, basically, is 12-volt power source off, of, off your car, throw the antenna up to the Chameleon uh, MCOM2, and you're good to go. So that's oh, an HF gateway. Yeah, full service HF Packet Vera, the whole nine yards. Got it. Got it. Wow. All in one little kit, wheels ready to roll out. That's awesome. And that's what I was talking about earlier. When you, 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 yeah, I love what you guys have done for, for simple users. Somebody used their stuff in their garage. This was all, you know, bought in one shot and it was about $3,200. Nice. Nice. So, so there you go. Somebody had asked earlier, what's, how much does it cost to set up a gateway anywhere from zero to the sky's the limit, but here's, here's a portable gateway set up for about $3,200. Um, yeah, we oh. actually, we actually priced it out because the, one of the groups that I'm working with locally here, one of the um, fire safe uh, communities, we're talking about putting up some gateways and, you know, we kind of priced it out on the basic and, you know, um, I love Mike's gateway here and it does the full service for, for what we're doing locally in the community. Our, our community is not more than 12 miles wide by 12 miles long. So it's really UHF VHF for uh, if you could get a hold of a, a Yesu, you know, 20, 2900 or a 6,000, um, you know, two meter or two meter, 70 centimeter um, that that'll set you back two or $300. A signal link right now is up to about $140. Uh, good antenna, about a hundred dollars. Um, uh, old laptop out of somebody's garage. Cause honestly, that would be the last thing I tell anybody to buy was the computer. Cause pretty much anybody's old laptop that they're not running anymore. As long as it's run, you know, capable of when running windows 10 would work. If not, you can go get one of those B link PCs for a hundred, 150 bucks. Um, some coax, uh, a battery here or there, a power supply. Really, you could you could have a, a two meter gateway set up for $700 without too much of a problem. Another radio that's, of, yeah. that's really popular for, uh, you know, basic gateway use is the uh, Alinko DR-135 radios. Yep. 
They also make a two meter and a 440 version. Although I understand the two meter, the 220 may have been it's dropped. Depre- it's been deprecated. But um, the nice thing about that radio is it does have a data port on the back and uh, the um, rim, uh, rim boards and DRA boards, they have a custom version of those boards that plugs right into that radio. No cabling, just that and a USB cable and uh, does do 9600 baud uh, kind of plug and play. And that uh, rim board right now is 50 bucks. So it's fairly reasonable way to do that. The bad news is that 135 radio is very difficult to get right now, if not impossible. Uh, but that shall pass, I think. So a couple of people have asked, how do you get started with this? Where do you get the gateway sysops information and so forth? You basically go to the WinLink uh, page. And so I've got that up on screen right now. Um, there's a, a page that says join the gateway sysops team. So before we uh, look at any more detail there, I'm going to go. That link is in the chat. I put it in the chat. Yeah, it's in the chat. So, so if I go to the main wind link page, where would I click in order to get to that page? Do you know where that, can you guide me through that click real quick? I'm not sure you can get there from here. I, I just did a Google search. Oh, okay. So right over, I think it's right here, fast info. It's over here on the upper right, the very bottom link. It says become yeah, that's, a that's where it is right there. Sysop, yeah. right there, that link, and it'll take you right to this page. And uh, it just gives you the information that you need to, to get started. And um, there you go. So, um, and it tells you what you're going to send an email to Steve Waterman, and it just tells you what to include in that email. And he, at least in my case, I think within a couple of hours, he had emailed me back and welcomed me. And, and uh, as David said, he talked to me about shares, which uh, is a whole nother conversation, but that got us, got us going. And uh, uh, ACS now has five shares licenses. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, one thing always leads to another. So Brent, Brent asked a question in the in the chat, and it's a good question. And um, uh, his question was, uh, when uh, Windows 10 hits end of life, then what happens then? And um, and I don't mean to be snarky, but I'll just preface it with that so you can hear what I have to say. And in the corporate world where I work, um, we still have um, some Windows XP machines running. And please don't link it in me and figure out where I work and turn my company in. But um, as many things, even after Windows 10 hits end of life, the software is going to still work. Uh, you may not get updates. And yes, it may be vulnerable to things, but it'll keep going. Um, I'll tell you, even the most modern PC that I have in my house, I've tried to upgrade to Windows 11 and it's not new enough. And I'm not um, uh, afraid enough of Windows 10 going away such that I'd want to upgrade or buy new equipment to replace the stuff that I have working. So um It'll probably still work for a while and I'll assume the development team or I'll hope the development team will keep writing updates so it'll work on Windows 10 until it just becomes unsafe to to use or support. So um, a lot of a lot of point of sale equipment out there, uh, red cash registers and all that are still running XP. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and that, you know, it's. Um, it's what it is. And, and I saw um, Mike chat, Mike posted in the chat that XP won't work with WinLink. And um, that's probably the right decision because there are a lot of vulnerabilities there. Um, but um, for now, uh, if you're setting up on Windows 10, you should be good for, I would hope, a couple of years. I've, I've not heard of a lot of compatibility issues where stuff runs on Windows 10, doesn't run on 11. Yeah. But it's, you know, not a lot of people out there that I know have 11 yet. And I think and I think the question is more of the of the fact that a lot of the equipment we have won't upgrade to Windows 11. I've got a lot of, you know, I don't want to say modern PCs, you know, the the touch the screen that I have here that I share with in the class that runs my um, WinLink Express station. Um, it's only four years old. Um, it's very functional. I think it's like an i7. It's got plenty of RAM. It's got plenty of power. It does everything I needed to do, but it won't upgrade um, to Windows 11. And, and that's not a reason for me to want to replace it right now. 
maybe a couple of years down the road that might that might be the case but um i'm on my upgrade schedule not on microsoft's so and the more right. cynical amongst us might suggest that the uh compatibility test that windows offers uh may be skewed towards selling new pcs so. well, yeah there's actually stuff out on the internet um where it shows you you can go in and, and make a couple of reg edits and it allow you to upgrade. Uh, I did see Mike posted out there that it's working working on Windows 11, and I wouldn't have any concerns about it working on Windows 11. I'm more concerned about a lot of the old hardware we have running and, and continuing to support what we're doing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So let's, um, if you haven't sent in your WinLink check-in, go ahead and send that in. I'm gonna bring up the map here. I know we're 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 running a little uh, past the hour, and I want to make sure everybody has a chance to uh, to be able to go hang out and do whatever event thing is coming up uh, later today in a in a brief time. So I'll do one more quick check here for for any last minute uh, check-ins, and then let's bring up the map and see how we did. So. Uh, as as usual, we're going to use that that mapping feature that's built into WinLink, and I'm just come up here to the toolbar, click on the globe icon, and uh, I'm going to select the WinLink check-in form. So everybody who used the standard WinLink check-in form, let's see how we did today. We'll display the maps, and this is just the check-ins for the past four hours. Uh, so this is just during the session, and there we go. We've got uh, check-ins. Uh, from Hawaii, New Zealand, um, Austria, Mexico. Uh, I believe we've got one from Canada up here and well across the U.S. So thanks everybody for for connecting and joining. Um, oh, let me uh, let me unpin the guys here so you guys are able to see them see the map a little bit bigger. And spotlight. There you go. There is the map. Uh, for today's WinLink check-ins during this session that have come in. And so you can see uh, Wave Talkers is uh, all over the place. I want to say thank you to all of you who are supporting us on, on WinLink using the Buy Us a Coffee link. That is uh, really helping to keep all of this infrastructure up and running, helping us keep going with creating new content all of the time. Uh, if, you, uh, if you like what we're doing and you're, you're finding it helpful, uh, please consider going on to Wave Talkers. Uh, clicking on the little coffee cup down in the down in the corner or up in the top gray bar. It's on pretty much every page and uh, any anything definitely helps uh, to keep everything up and running. And with that, we will uh, we will do a brief little after party here. So if you're inside of the Zoom, uh, we encourage you to to hang around for for a few minutes and, and we'll take some additional questions that that folks have. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week otherwise. And we'll, we don't know what the topic is going to be quite yet at this point, but it's going to be something MCOM related. Uh, we do have a, a presentation that's going to be coming up in, in May, a couple of months from now. We're going to be on uh, the Rat Pack again. Uh, I did a talk a couple weeks ago on the Rat Pack for uh, solar panels and batteries. So go check that talk out. And I'll be posting that up on Wave Talkers hopefully this week as well, as my week starts to, to calm down a little bit. Um, but otherwise, we will say 7-3 to everyone out there on the internet. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll wrap this up on the different channels. So if you are watching on Facebook, or uh, yeah, Facebook, thanks a lot for, for joining us. We're going to go ahead and sign off of Facebook. We'll go ahead and sign off of YouTube. Thanks a lot if you're watching on YouTube. And let's see, where is it? There it is, LinkedIn. Thanks a lot on LinkedIn for joining us. And finally, we will, if I can find the screen that has it, uh, we'll end it up on Wave Talkers. And as usual, this will be posted immediately following the session up on Wave Talkers as well. So thank you very much. And there we go. We are off of all of those. Oops, why are these coming?